hello all I believe you are doing well by the grace of God we thank God for another opportunity to be together so we're going to continue from where we stopped and before we end the course on machine design 3 we are going to have one more lecture let's have a short prayer before we start heavenly father we thank you this time for another opportunity you have given us to be alive and to have this session we pray that you guide us through and your name will be glorified in jesus name i pray amen thank you very much so we, we were able to finish the design of uh, spec gears and we are going to look at one more gear on the design of helical gears all right um there are some terms which are familiar we are already familiar with in the spec gear design which also applies in helical gears but there are these uh, few things that we need to note as we uh, go through the design of helical gears so these are some of the terms that are used in the design the first one we are looking at is the helix angle the helix angle right and the helix angle is a constant the helix angle is a constant and um, it is the angle it is a constant angle made by the helixes with the axis of rotation all right so we look at When we look at this diagram here the inclination or the angle between the inclination of the uh, gear teeth with the axis of rotation is called the helix angle we also have the axial pitch the axial pitch is the distance parallel to the axis between similar faces of adjacent teeth. It is same as circular pitch in the spare gears. As we design spare gear, we know what circular pitch is. It is the same in this one. But in this case, we have we call it the axial pitch all right so we still use the same symbol to show the easier pitch pc the easier pitch may be defined as a circular pitch in the plane of rotation or the diametral plane and then we also have the normal pitch it is the distance between similar faces of adjacent teeth along a helix on the pitch cylinders normal to the teeth it is denoted by pn so the normal pitch here is that distance between similar faces so for instance we have this seat on the gear and then this other one here now that distance between the two is called the normal pitch and this distance is measured perpendicular to the orientation of the gear to or perpendicular to the inclination of the teeth of the gear the normal teeth may be defined as circular pitch in the normal plane which is a plane perpendicular to the teeth all right and we also 
use this equation here to show the relationship between the normal pitch the circular pitch or the exact pitch and then the helix angle the helix angle all right so the third one we've defined is normal pitch and these are the things that you need to note all right um also note that if the gears are cut by standard hop then the pitch or model and the pressure angle of the hub will apply in the normal plane. On the other hand, if the gears are cut by Fellows gear shaper method, the pitch and pressure angle of the cutter will apply to the plane of rotation. The relationship between the pressure angle and the normal plane and then the pressure angle phi in the diametral plane or the plane of rotation is given by this formula so we have this formula to show all right then um, we're going to look at face width of helical gears in order to have more than one pair of teeth in contact the two displacement that is the advancement of one end of tooth over the other end which is also called the overlap should be at least equal to the easier pitch all right so here we have this as a spec um the spec gear uh, the helical gear and you see that we have the gear to incline at an angle an overlap here is that if you look at the beginning of the tooth from here to the end of it you will see that they are not at the same level right the distance the vertical distance from this point to this point which is from here to that point is called is called the overlap and this statement is saying that in order to have more than one pair of teeth in contact the two displacement or the overlap should be at least equal to the pitch or equal to the easier pitch right or the circular pitch and the circular pitch is that distance or the easier pitch the distance between the adjacent tooth the adjacent teeth which is distant from this point here to that point so it should be at least equal to that value so it could be more than that but the minimum is pc so overlap is equal to pc which you can calculate it to be equal to b which is the face width right the face width tan alpha where alpha is the helix angle the angle of inclination of the gear teeth the normal tooth load which is wn has two components the wn we know that when gears are engaged the load present is always normal or perpendicular to the surface of engagement all right then that normal load is resolved into two components one is the tangential component wt 
so we have the tangential component wt and then the axial component in helical gears we have the axial component as well w a all right so the equation for these components of the normal load is given by this expression here All right so we have wa the easier component is equal to wn sine alpha where alpha is the helix angle which is equal to wt tan alpha all right so with this we can determine which component that we want to determine from this equation here equation 3 we see that as the helix angle increases as we increase the helix angle here then the tooth overlap will also increase all right so as we increase the helix angle we'll have the tooth overlap also increasing but at the same time as we increase the helix angle we will also have the thrust or the easier components of the force increasing as well given by this equation so you see from this equation here equation 4 that as the helix angle is increasing the easier component of the force wn will also increase so wa is going to go up and this is not desirable it's not desirable in the design of helical gears so because of that it's usually recommended that the overlap should be 15 percent of the circular pitch we said that the minimum should be equal to the circular pitch but it should not be more than 15 percent of the circular pitch to have a good design and we don't want the exact component to be so much because it will put so much force on the bearings of the shaft and we know that what is sent into useful work or the load the component that will transmit the power from the input gear or the input shaft to the output shaft is the wt that is a tangential component transmitted load All right so if the wa is increasing at the expense of wt you see that the system will not be efficient enough you're going to have less amount of power being transmitted all right so usually the w the um overlap is maintained at 15 percent of the circular pitch if that is the case we are going to have the overlap to be equal to beta and alpha as stated earlier and that will be equal to um, this 1.15 pc all right so 1.15 should be about 15 percent more than the pc so 1.15 pc and from that we can say that the b which is the face width is equal to 1.15 pc divided by tan alpha and we know that pc 
from the design spec is that PC is equal to pi m that is pi times the model so we are going to have the expression to be 1.15 times pi m divided by tan alpha so that is and that this is the expression for the um, the expression for the face width b all right the maximum face width may be taken as 12.5 to 12.5 of the model to 20 times the model right and um, in terms of in terms of the pinion diameter we can have the face width to be equal to 1.5 times dp to two times the dp or the diameter uh, pitch circle diameter for the pinion and in some situations 2.5 dp may be used in case of helical double helical gears as in herribone herribone gears the minimum face width is given by this expression over here right so we have this expression for herribone gears the minimum face width and the maximum face width may be anywhere from 20 to 30 times the model in a single helical gear the helix angle ranges from 20 to 35 while the for double helical gear it ranges from um it may be 45 it may be up to uh, 45 degrees In the design of helical gears, we have what you call the formative or the equivalent number of ticks for helical gears. The formative or equivalent number of ticks for helical gear may be defined as the number of ticks that can be generated on the surface of a cylinder, a cylinder having a radius equal to the radius of curvature at a point at the tip of the minor axis of an ellipse obtained by taking a section with a section of the gear in the normal plane let's go back and look at this diagram here when you look at this diagram we see that we have the gear tip inclined a certain angle at the angle of the or what we call the helix angle now when you cut this gear all right cut it such that the cutting plane is perpendicular to the angle of inclination of the gears or is perpendicular to the inclination of the gear tip or the orientation of the gear tip when you cut it let's say we cut it along the diagonal or we cut it such that like where this line is we have this line here so we cut it along that side right and you cut it along that as cutting plane you can have you can generate a shape and that shape will be in the form of an ellipse right it's like having a cylinder so when you have a cylinder and you truncate it or you truncate it or you cut it divide it with a plane that is inclined at an angle all right a certain angle it's inclined at a certain angle to the axis of the cylinder it gives you the shape of an ellipse and here if we put the cutting plane perpendicular to the um 
angle of uh, to be perpendicular to the orientation of the gear teeth would generate an ellipse and the statement is saying that that ellipse that is generated that ellipse that is generated it will be having a minor and a major axis right and the minor axis the minor axis at the tip of the minor axis you can have a curve we can have a curve there or an arc and that arc is having a radius right and that radius when you take that radius and you complete it to have a complete circle we can have the pitch circle of a spare gear so if we take that one as a spare gear and we have some number of teeth on that spare gear the strength of that spare gear its nature and everything will be equal to the helical gear all right it will be equal to the helical gear from which we generated that spare gear all right that's what the statement is saying and that is necessary because in design of helical gears we see that if the helical gears are getting engaged engagement starts from one point and then gradually moves along the surface of the or the um, the face of the gear teeth till it ends so it's a gradual and that uh, that engagement is done along the diagonal of the face of the gear so it's somewhat difficult to be able to determine the force that is transmitted force and other parameters along the face of the helical gear so if we are able to produce an equivalent spare gear from that helical gear then we can use the helical gear the spare gear to determine those parameters of the helical gear and we use this equation to do that transformation so t which is the equivalent number of teeth or the formative number of teeth on the spare gear on a, a spare gear on equivalent spare gear is equal to the actual number of teeth on the helical gear divided by the cos of the helix angle q all right so that is this expression over here Now there are some proportions of helical gears that we can note. The pressure angle in the plane of rotation is called phi, and that is between usually between 15% to 25%. The helix angle is between 20 degrees to 45 degrees. So this is 15 degrees to 25 degrees. 20 degrees to 45 degrees the addendum is 0 0.8 times the model that's the maximum addendum and the minimum the addendum is equal to 1 times the model and the minimum total depth is 1.8 times the model we also have the the minimum clearance to be equal to 0 0.2 times the model the thickness the two thickness is equal to 1 1.1.5708 times the model now let's look at the strength of a helical gear in helical gear the contact between the mating teeth is gradual right starting at one end and moving along the teeth so that at any instant the line of contact runs diagonally across the teeth therefore in order to find the strength of helical gears a modified lewis equation is used and that equation is given by this all right and you see that this is similar to 
the Lewis equation used in the design of spare gears. So in this equation, we have the transmitted load or the tangential load is equal to the sigma naught sigma naught which is the allowable static stress times the velocity factor so we have the velocity factor times the face width times pi times model times y prime and the y prime is the tooth form factor which corresponds to the uh, formative um, number of teeth the values for the velocity factor may be taken as we have here so depending on the peripheral velocity or the pitch line velocity we can have the equation for the velocity factor so for velocities from 5 meters per second to 10 meters per second we use this equation here All right so we use this expression for the velocity factor then for values or peripheral uh, velocities from 10 meters per second to 20 meters per second this is the value and if the velocities are greater than 20 meters per second we use this expression and for non-metallic gears this expression is used we have the dynamic tooth load on the helical gear to be this expression here right just similar to that in spare gears so mean that all these are having their respective meaning as defined in the design of spare gears so here we have the we have the tangential load right we have the velocity and face width we have the deformation factor c phi here is the helix angle the tangential load we have the helix angle v is velocity and all the others the same all right then the static tooth load or the endurance strength of the tooth is given by this equation here so the static tooth load is given by sigma e and then b e m y prime except the y prime which is the formative the form factor for the formative um, number of teeth the rest have their usual meaning then we also have the wear tooth load the wear tooth load is given by this equation here All right so here we have dp as the pitch circle diameter for the pinion we have the face width we have the q which is the ratio factor and then we also have the k divided by cos square alpha
all right so the load fact the load factor k is given by this equation we are familiar with this the only difference is the um, phi n which is the pressure angle in the normal plane sigma es is the surface endurance limit stress and then we have the modulus of elasticity for the pinion ep the modulus of elasticity for the gear all right so let's look at an example over here it states that a pair of helical gears are to transmit 15 kilowatts of power right the teeth are 20 degrees stab in diameter plane and have a helix angle of 45 so this 20 degrees here is the pressure angle in the diameter plane all right or the pressure angle in the plane of rotation then we also have the helix angle to be 45 degrees the pinion runs at 1000 rpm and has 80 millimeters peak diameter so dp the peak diameter for the pinion is 80 millimeters the gear has 320 millimeters diameter so the peak diameter for the gear is 320 millimeters if the gears are made of cast steel having allowable static strength of 100 megapascals so the allowable static strength or the allowable static stress is 100 megapascals determine a suitable model and face width from the standpoint of strength considering uh, from the standpoint of strength considerations and check the gears for where we've been given the surface endurance limit stress to be equal to 620 megapascals all right so in this one we have to calculate the a suitable model and face width from the standpoint of strength consideration all right let's look at it Right, so we'll be giving the power to be transmitted as 15 kilowatts we have the pressure angle in the diameter plane to be 20 degrees the helix angle is 45 we have the speed of the pinion to be equal to 1000 and um, 10,000 rpm the Peak circle diameter for the pinion is 80 millimeters and that of the gear is 320 millimeters and then we have the allowable static stress of the pinion and the gear to be equal to 100 megapascals and they are the same because we are made of the same material the surface endurance limit for the material is 618 megapascals so that is the surface endurance limit stress and we have to determine the model and the face width 
all right so the first thing we need to do is to determine the talk that is to be transmitted or we can as well determine the uh, transmitted load that is the load to be transmitted and we'll do that by first of all determining the torque to be transmitted right so the torque we know that the torque t is equal to 60 times p divided by um 2 pi and p so we have the torque to be equal to 60 times the power divided by 2 pi times the number of states sorry the speed of the pinion all right when you substitute the values in this one we're going to get 60 times 15 times 10 exponent 3 because we have the power to be 15 kilowatts divided by 2 pi times 10,000 and when you compute you will get 14 point 3 2 4 newton meters then we need to determine the transmitted load w t and that is equal to the torque t divided by the pitch circle radius and the pitch circle radius for the pinion is d p on two so d p on two give us the pitch circle radius so put the values in we have 14.324 divided by the pitch circle diameter is given as 80 millimeters and we divide that by 2 that will give us 40 millimeters we need to convert to meters right so when we do that you are going to get 0 0.04 0 0.04 then when you compute that you get the transmitted load to be equal to 358.099 newtons we know that the number of teeth on the pinion TP is equal to DP to the P circle diameter for the pinion divided by the model. Alright. So let's put the values in. The P circle diameter for the pinion is A T over the model. M, I'll give us the more of teeth on the on the pinion. Then from here we are going to calculate the equivalent number of teeth. All right, you see that in the design of the spec gear, we need to employ some equations. Sorry, the design of helical gear, we need to employ some equations from uh, the design of spec gears. To do it so what we do is that in the design of helical gears we need to determine some virtual uh, design or an equivalent design of a spare gear all right then with that when we are able to success satisfactorily design the spare gear we can say that the helical gear matching the same strength of that spare gear will be able to work so what we do is to determine the equivalent number of teeth on it and as we know already the equivalent number of teeth the T E is equal to the 
number of ticks the actual number of ticks on the helical gear so here we are doing it with respect to the pinion so the virtual equivalent number of ticks on the uh, pinion all right the equivalent number of ticks on the pinion the spare gear pinion is equal to the actual number of ticks on the helical gear divided by divided by cos alpha q all right or you can say that divided by cos the helix angle q and the helix angle we know it to be equal to 45 so here when you put in the values we're going to have 80 divided by m all over cos 45 cube all right when we compute this information we are going to get te to be equal to 226.274 over m in terms of the model m because we don't know m yet then from here we need to determine the tooth form factor and the form factor we're told that the profile for the gear is the stab depth involute system so if that is the case the form factor that we use is y prime which is the form factor for the helical gear equivalent form factor is equal to 0.175 minus 0 0.841 divided by T E divided by T e. then when we put in the value for T E we are going to get Y P to be equal to 0 0.8 Eight four one zero point one seven five and another point eight four one divided by T E, which is two two six point two seven four all over M. All right, then we need to simplify this expression there. When we simplify, we are going to get. yp to be equal to 0 0.175 minus 0 0.00372 0 0.00372 m when you simplify this you get that then uh, the next thing is to calculate for the velocity factor cv all right and so we know that to do to calculate the velocity factor first of all we need to know the equation that we are going to use for the velocity factor we can do that when we know the velocity the pitch line velocity or the circumferential velocity and we know that the velocity, pitch line velocity V is equal to pi dp np divided by 60. Alright, so from here we can say that the velocity is equal to pi times. We know the diameter, the pit cycle diameter for the pinion 
to be 80. So in meters, that would be 0 0.08. The speed is 10,000 divided by 60. Alright, so we have it like that. Then when you compute that, we're going to have V to be equal to 41.888. Meters per second. All right. Meters per second. And you will see that this value here is greater than 20 meters per second. And for values of pitch line velocity greater than 20 meters per second, the equation we use for the pitch line velocity is equal to CV equals 0 0.75 divided by 0 0.75 plus square root of V plus square root of V all right then we we'll compute that one and we get when we compute that we get CV to be equal to 0 0.104 as the velocity factor we are not given the value of the face width in terms of the model but we know that the face width varies from 12.5 to somewhere 20 of the model All right so in this case we have to assume so let's assume that the face width is 12.5 m when we do it that way, then, so assuming, assuming B is equal to 12.5 M, and we also know that, so we assume, let's assume, assume B to be equal to 12.5 M. Then we know that the WT, the transmitted load, is equal to sigma OP, which is the static stress for the pinion CV B pi M YP, Y prime P. And that is the Lewis equation, and this is what we are going to use for the gear design. We are told that the gear and the pinion are made of the same material. And in such cases, we know that the pinion is the weaker material. If they are made of the same material, we know that the pinion is the weaker element. So in that case, the design will be done based on the pinion. So we are going to use in this Lewis equation the allowable static stress for the pinion. We have the CV, the velocity factor, the face width, the model, and then the form factor. All right, but we assume that the face width is 12 m, and we have already calculated for the um, transmitted load and we have the value for the transmitted load to be equal to 300 and we have it to be 358.099 and that will be equal to 100 which is the 
stress, allowable stress, uh, static stress times uh, 0 0.104 pi m times 12.5 m. Twelve point five M, which is replacing the face width. The M here is that one, and then we also have the YP, and the YP, which is a form factor, we have already calculated it to be equal to zero point one seven five. Minus zero point zero zero three seven two M. Then we simplify this equation here. So we simplify all that expression. But before that, you should know here the Allowable static stress is in megapascals, all right? But we didn't bring the 10 exponent 6 because the model here is in millimeters and the face width here also in millimeters, all right? So when we convert this one and that one, this will give us 10 exponent negative 3, this one to 10 exponent negative 3, and that will be 10 exponent negative 6. After computing, we have three five eight point zero nine nine to be equal to seventy one point four seven one M square minus one point five one nine mq we can beautifully arrange this equation again to be one point five one nine mq minus seven one point four seven one m square plus Three five eight point zero nine nine all equals zero. From here, you can use your calculator to solve this quadratic equation. And when you solve this equation, you are going to get your model m to be equal to 2.3 as the model but if you look at the table for the standard models here we have to make sure that our model is standard this is the value we are getting now we go to the mod the table for standard models and we realize that we don't get 2.3 there, but you have 2.5. So we select 2.5 as the model, which is close to this value. So from there, we have the model M to be equal to 2.5 millimeters. All right. Having obtained the model, we can now calculate the face width. We assume that the face width to be equal to is equal to 12.5 12, 12 m. So we can say that from here, b the face width is 12.5 times 2.5, and that will give us 13.5. 
31.25 millimeters. Or you can approximate it to 32 millimeters. So we have our face width as 32 millimeters. Now, again, we are to check this gear for where it means that we have to determine whether the gear is satisfactory and we need to wear quickly when in operation and to do that we need to determine the wear load all right the tooth wear load we have to determine it so let's Calculate for the wear load. You know that the wear load W W is equal to D P. B Q K divided by cos square alpha. All right, so we have the DP at the piece circle diameter for the pinion, the face with B. And we have the ratio factor Q. K is the load factor. We know DP, we know B, Q and K. We don't know, we have to calculate it. And we know that Q, the ratio factor is equal to 2 times the velocity ratio of the gear set divided by. The velocity ratio plus one right so we need to compute this and we don't know the velocity ratio yet we need to calculate we know the velocity ratio to be equal to d g over dp the pixel diameter for the gear divided by the pixel diameter for the pinion and that gives us 320 divided by 80 so we have the value for the velocity ratio to be equal to 4 and this means that our q will be equal to 2 times 4 divided by 4 plus 1 and when you compute this one you are going to get 1.6 as your ratio factor and the next one is the k the load factor the load factor is equal to sigma es which is the surface endurance limit stress square sine phi n which is the normal pressure angle or the pressure angle in the normal plane then divided by 1.4 all times 1 divided by the EP the Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity so modulus of elasticity for the pinion plus 1 over the modulus of elasticity for the gear alright so we need to compute this but 
we don't know 5m which is the 5m which is the um, pressure angle in the normal plane we don't know it but we know that the expression there's a relation between it and then phi as well as alpha so we know that tan phi n is equal to is equal to tan phi cos alpha so tan phi n is equal to tan phi which is the pressure angle in the diameter plane times the cos of the helix angle and we know this one we know that one so in effect we can see that phi n is equal to actan or tan inverse inverse of tan phi phi is 20 cos alpha 45 so when you compute all this we're going to have 5n to be equal to 14 point for three degrees so we have obtained this sigma e yes, we have it we don't have the modulus of elasticity for the pinion and the gear they are made of the same material so they are the same but we're not given the equation right so we can assume some value let's take it to be 200 gigapascals because it's made of the material is iron a cast iron we can take it to be that value okay so if we assume it that way but in, in the complete question where you have been asked you'll be given this value but right? it was omitted in our question so we are taking that value to be 200 gigapascals all right so because now we have everything, we can substitute and solve for it for k. So here we can see that k is equal to k is equal to sigma es. Sigma es we're given six eighteen megapascals. So we have six one eight times ten exponent 6 square all right sine 14.43 divided by 1.4 all in bracket we have 1 divided by 200 times 10 exponent 9 plus 1 over 200 times 10 exponent 9 exponent 9 there times 10 exponent 9 okay when we simplify this we are going to get k to be equal to 6 Seven nine eight one six point five four one point five four one and um, the unit is in Pascal. Now Having obtained this, we can calculate for the 
well load. So we just substitute these values we have into this equation. And that will give us 0 0.08 times 0 0.032 which is a fixed width times 1.6 times all this value 6, 7, 9, 8, 1, 6 point that 5, 4, 1 okay and all this divided by cos 5 cos 5 cube and our phi is 45 when you compute everything we are going to get the well root to be equal to 5 5 Six nine point zero five seven newtons. That gives us the well load. And having obtained the well load, we can determine whether this design is satisfactory or not. So this gear, we can say that it's satisfactory because the well load that we obtain is greater than the transmitted load remember that the transmitted load is equal to 358.099 that is the load that is being transmitted when you compare it to this value here you will see that this value is greater so if this is greater it means that because we have some amount of load which we are transmitting which is far less than this value it means that our design is safe with regards to where. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. In case of any question, you can post it. God bless you.